The strange and sad ending of Ida Lupino. Difficult life. Ida Lupino has not been treated well by history. She was the niece of the English music hall legend Lupino Lane who later became a silent movie comedy star. Her father was a famed music hall performer and her family was renowned in the UK. During her peak, she was a film star and became one of the first female directors in movies and television. She directed several motion pictures and over 100 episodes of television programs. She dealt with the male hierarchy in Hollywood and overcame the rampant chauvinism first producing independent films with her second husband, Collier Young. She eventually became a top director of films that favored a unique touch in film noir. By the 1960s she had become a prolific television director. Lupino was sadly a long-term alcoholic and drug abuser that derailed her career. She ended up a recluse who made poor business decisions. She ended up selling a beautiful home in Brentwood and moved to a modest home in the valley. Her third marriage to Howard Duff was quite contentious and ended in a divorce after a long separation. She died a badly forgotten person after living many years as a Norma Desmond type. Famed TV producer, director Bob Finkel was the producer of the 1972 Academy Awards. He asked Lupino to be a presenter. When she arrived at the awards she was blotto. She was falling down drunk. She had no one with her. She refused to go home and Bob Finkel was panicking. He didn't want her embarrassing herself or the awards. So he locked Ida in a broom closet. She was snoring on a couch in a dressing room so he moved her into the closet and locked the door. He actually forgot about her until the show ended. When he finally went to retrieve her she was still sleeping in the closet. A definite sad end to a remarkable career and a pioneer filmmaker that paved the way for women in cinema. She was never recognized. No honorary awards, no AFI nada. A crying shame and a tragic conclusion to her life. Ida Lupino was born in London on February 4, 1918. In the weeks leading up to her birth during the First World War, German triplanes had rained bombs down on the city, killing 68. The terror from above had yielded to dense fog, punctured by a thunderstorm a dramatic beginning for a future world-class actress. Lupino was born into a theatrical dynasty. Father Stanley was a music hall sensation and her ancestry was rich in actors, dancers, singers, puppeteers and tightrope walkers. The success of Lupino's father, grandfather and uncles had resulted in family friendship with such literary figures as Charles Dickens and Peter Pan creator J. M. Barrie, while Edward VII, son of Britain's long-seated Queen Victoria, had dubbed the Lupino clan the royal family of Greece paint. With Stanley Lupino increasing fortunes as a popular entertainer, the family was able to relocate from a modest home in Dulwich to a Tudor mansion in Streatham. Ida Lupino grew up in a home full of theatrical memorabilia, and sang her first songs with her younger sister and parents around the family piano. When Lupino was eight years old, her parents departed for a tour of the United States and engagements on Broadway. While she and her sister were deposited at the Clarence House, a boarding school for girls in West Brighton, Lupino wrote plays in which she also played the lead roles. Over the next few years, Lupino matured into a young woman of remarkable beauty, particularized by alabaster skin and piercing blue eyes. She made her film debut as an extra in The Love Race, 1931, starring her father and directed by her cousin, Lupino Lane. A German director visiting the set had taken note of her attractiveness and offered her a role in his upcoming production later cutting her one scene because Lupino was prettier than his leading lady. Choosing education over furthering her career at this young age, Lupino enrolled in London Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. In her second term, she was cast in a production of Heartbreak House by playwright George Bernard Shaw himself. When not performing or studying technique, Lupino often accompanied her father to jobs at Elstree Studio, where she observed Stanley Lupino perfecting his craft before the camera. Lupino returned to cinema with a lead role in Alan Dwan Her First Affair, 1932. 
The role of a Lolita-type homewrecker had been pitched initially to her mother, Connie Emerald, then in her mid-30s. Accompanying Emerald to the tryout, the 14-year-old Lupino caught the eye of Dwan, who cast her instead. With her hair bleached for her star turn in the Sterling Films release, Lupino was promoted as the English Jean Harlow, yet she made relatively few films in Great Britain. At Paramount, Lupino's initial assignments were largely decorous. She played second female leads in Henry Hathaway Peter Ibbotson, 1935, as a potential love interest to star Gary Cooper, and Lewis Milestone Anything Goes, 1936, as Bing Crosby Shipboard Chippy. It was not until she outmaneuvered Vivian Lee for the role of a hot-tempered Cockney model in William Wellman The Light That Failed, 1936, opposite Ronald Coleman, that Lupino began to attract attention as an actress of gravitas and dramatic merit. Signing a contract with Warner Brothers, Lupino scored in a string of well-received programmers. In Raoul Walsh They Drive By Night, 1940, she upstaged both George Raft and soon-to-be-a-list star Humphrey Bogart as the scheming wife of a trucking magnate who is driven by lust to kill her. Over the next few years, she found a niche in shadowy dramas that anticipated the post-war film noir thrillers, including Archie Mayo Moontide, 1942, with Jean Gabin and Jean Negalesco's Deep Valley, 1947, with Dane Clark. Lupino left Warner's in 1947. After starring in Negalesco Scorching Noir Entry Roadhouse, 1948, she sought to improve her industry cachet by branching off into producing. With second husband, Columbia production executive Collier Young, she put money into the independent crime drama The Judge, 1949, directed by Elmer Clifton. When director Elmer Clifton suffered a heart attack in pre-production, Lupino stepped in to take his place, calling the shots on set from the first day of shooting in February 1949. Because the then 31-year-old Lupino was not a member of the Directors Guild of America, she downplayed her own significance behind the camera of Not Wanted, deferring for the record to the ailing Clifton, who retained official credit. Working quickly, Lupino shot the film guerrilla style on the streets of Los Angeles to reduce the necessity for and the cost of building sets. Though she was not Hollywood's first female director it was still novel for a woman to be calling the shots on a feature film. Lupino reputation spread quickly through the studios, with many a list actresses demanding private screenings of Not Wanted. Budgeted at just over $150,000, the film grossed over a million. Despite the apparent solidarity of forming their own distribution arm, Lupino and Collier Young had divorced in 1951. While Young had taken up with bigamist co-star Joan Fontaine, Lupino sought solace in the arms of actor Howard Duff, to whom she would remain married for the next 30 years. Lupino was famous for a punchy, unflinching directing style that was branded as masculine despite the fact that her aesthetic was in many ways a refutation of the patriarchal perspective. Paradoxically, Lupino's next opportunity to direct a feature came with the girls' school comedy The Trouble with Angels, 1966, starring Haley Mills as a convent cut up and Rosalind Russell as her autocratic mother superior. Though she was finished in features by the end of the decade, the aging Lupino continued to work exhaustively in film and television. As her looks coarsened with age, she was cast in earthier roles than those suggesting refinement. Divorced from Duff in 1984, Lupino moved from fashionable Brentwood to the more affordable San Fernando Valley on the far side of the Hollywood Hills. Struggling with long-term alcoholism, she grew reclusive in retirement, estranging herself even from her adult daughter. Her death in July 1990 hit the former actress hard and her final years were marked by bouts of depression and assorted illnesses, among them a mental deterioration that had first manifested itself as a difficulty remembering her lines on the sets of television shows. Diagnosed with cancer, she suffered a debilitating stroke in 1995 and died in her Burbank home on August 3 of that year, at the age of 77. Goodbye legendary actress, Ida Lupino.